Hey Rob, um, why haven't you made any content in a while? I've been busy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Alright, well, in that case, just keep doing whatever you're doing. I'll, 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 I'll get right on it. Alright, so, I haven't made any videos in a while, launched any rockets or anything, but there's good reason behind that. It's been a little bit rainy for a while. Because of that, I decided to do a couple things to fill the void. I also may have fallen into a Kerbal Space Program coma for a little while. But... On the upside, I did come up with some new video ideas. So this would be the first of them, which is about a topic called GNC. So GNC is really important if you're doing thrust vector controlled model rockets. It is guidance, navigation, and control. So in aerospace, we like to use a lot of acronyms, throw them around, sound fancy. And this one is kind of at the core of basically every rocket or missile program. So it's really important, it comes up a lot, so I figured why not make a full video about it and explain it from the engineer perspective and what I actually see in my day job where it's talked about on the regular. So GNC, again, Guidance, Navigation, Control. These are the core parts of actually flying a rocket. Outside of the engines, it's more on the um, the side of making it go where you want to go, but I'll explain all that. So why it's important is, well, you have rockets, um, they're cylinders, they're not strong in all their directions, so when you apply force off axis, it doesn't really work out very well. But by keeping it on track, you can keep the loads on the rocket low, you can keep it under control, and while you're flying, you can maintain your flight path so you go where you want to go. Um, the other thing too is rockets go very fast, space is very big, so a small deviation adds up to a really big deviation uh, over time. So over the flight of a spacecraft into orbit, a slight one degree off difference can mean everything. It can mean you make it to space or you just hit the atmosphere and you burn up. So. Again, really important to have precise guidance, navigation, and control. Because they can move very far very fast, they can get into trouble pretty quick. So you can have a runaway vehicle just veer off and end up somewhere where you don't want it. So for a model, it would be maybe somebody's backyard or uh, across the street or in a tree. But for like a Soyuz, it's dropping it in a city in China if it ends up in the wrong spot. Or for the United States, it could be dropping debris on the Bahamas. So to fly a rocket, you can't just control it, you know, by hand like any other vehicle. So a car, you just steer, you're driving, uh, an obstacle pops up and you just avoid it. With a rocket, things happen too fast and you need too subtle and fine of a control for a person to actually do it. So things happen so fast that you can't react. And because of this, a computer can. So when the computer steps in and the computer is flying the rocket, it does a way better job. So it can be watching the speed, the altitude, everything, all the sensors at the same time and be keeping the rocket inside what we call the box. So the box is the flight parameter. So if you can imagine a rocket taking off and as it's heading towards orbit, it is inside of a, a trajectory, okay? But there isn't just one perfect position and speed and everything that it could be in. There's a range. So 
when it gets to that spot, it needs to be in this area going about this fast and all this stuff. So we set up a minimum and a maximum and all sorts of distance and all sorts of things that confine it so that we know this is good, this is okay, this is great, and that's not okay. So if you're in the not okay realm, then you need to fix it or you need to get out of dodge and abort or whatever you can do to stop things from getting worse. Usually this means blowing up the vehicle. For model rocket, it can just mean opening the parachute a little earlier. So even though the acronym is GNC for Guidance Navigation Control, it's far more like NGC for the way that things actually happen. GNC just sounds better. So first off, you have navigation. So for navigation, you have to determine what you're doing. So if you're looking at a map and you can point to where you are, that's navigation basically. And then you can determine um, where you're going kind of too. And again, navigation, you're looking at your state. So when you have a rocket and it is in a position, it knows its position and it knows its orientation and all of that information comes together to tell it what it's doing. So this gives it its state vector, which is how fast it's going, where it's going, and what's going on here. So when I'm flying a model rocket, this is important to me because my model needs to know what direction it's pointing out, basically. So I have to give it sensors that can tell it which way it's pointing or how high it is, because even though it knows which direction it's pointing, it doesn't know what uh, altitude it's at, and it needs more and more sensors to figure out its state. So navigation kind of boils down to its own understanding of what it's doing. So on your flight computer, you're kind of determining all of that information and figuring it out. So the flight computer basically does your navigation side. The software in the flight computer does your guidance side. So that's a little bit more interesting. Now, the guidance side of things is a little more complex. With guidance, you have a lot going on software-wise, and it's more of an algorithm than a hardware or a sensor. So guidance is looking at the desired path that it's trying to travel in and it's comparing it to the state vector from the navigation system and they're passing this information along between them to determine the best course of action. So the guidance is almost like the reasoning behind the flight. Um, using guidance it determines how to get where it's trying to go. So it's almost like the AI in the system. So if I have my rocket once again, and the navigation system is saying I'm three degrees off target, and the guidance system says, well, you're three degrees off, so we need to do something about it. So the guidance system makes a decision based on that deviation that it initially figured out. And it has to say how hard it has to turn back to get to where it's going. So by coming up with this forward plan of getting back to where you're going, you can then enact it. And that's where control comes in. So for my models, I'm using a thrust vector control system. So the thrust vector is enacting control. So control is like the mechanical manipulation of the actual vehicle. We have a thrust vector control system that allows us to control the rocket and guide it and stay on target. It does that by creating a torque on the rocket. So if we displace some of the thrust, we can push the aft end of the rocket around and steer it effectively. So this is like putting a oar in the water behind your kayak. It doesn't necessarily know where you want to go, but you as a person can look at your position, judge it with where you're trying to go down the river and your mind has a process involving steering 
and how much to steer to go where you need to go. So here it is, all happening with a vehicle. You have an outside force that acts on the vehicle that deviates it from the initial flight path. Now, once it's off of this path, the navigation system then has to make a determination. And that's, where am I now? So it looks at what it's doing, what its attitude is, what its state vector is, and then it passes that back to the guidance system. Then the guidance system says, I'm this far off, I have this much control authority at maximum, and I need to apply this much to get back to where I'm going. Using a PID loop, we can tune the amount of control in the guidance algorithm to get right back on target. So this brings us back on course using the control system. It doesn't matter what the control system is, it just matters that it can steer the vehicle. The restorative force of the controls then acts to push it back on target, and then we have a vehicle right back in the box and we're continuing on. So for thrust vector control, it's pretty simple. The thrust vector acts through the engines and into the aft end of the rocket. Doesn't matter if it's a model, a real thing, or um, a fighter jet even. The thrust vector is coming out of the rear of the vehicle, and when you divert it, you create a new thrust vector. So it's got the same magnitude maybe, so it's still pushing as hard, but it's not pushing along the length of the rocket. So then you exert a little bit less force you exert a little bit less force pushing the rocket, and instead of pushing it forward, you're pushing on the aft section of the rocket with a little bit of force. That small amount of force acts over a length about the center of mass, and you have like a lever, so the longer your rocket is, the more torque you can actually create about it. There's some other mechanical properties in there, like the moment of inertia and stuff that make it harder to turn if it's bigger, but you kind of have to find a happy medium between all of those. But essentially, the more you gimbal and the more you angle the engine, the more force you can apply sideways. And you can kind of imagine if you could apply a 90 degree force, that would be the most spin you could put on your vehicle, and that would give you the most control authority. Now, that's not necessary for basically anything, but it does illustrate the concept. So when you apply a force to an object, you essentially put it in motion, then you have to kind of apply a restorative force to put it back. So when you apply force with an RCS thruster, you push the vehicle one direction, and then it's going to continue moving until you stop it because its inertia doesn't want it to stop moving. So the algorithm inside the vehicle is running round the clock while it's flying and it's checking the navigation state vector and the conditions of the flight. Then it's figuring out, hey, is the navigation information that I'm getting over time any good? Does it make sense? Am I unrecoverable? So if things are getting way worse than I want, then do I need to open my parachute? Do I need to abort? Do I need to pull the crew off the spacecraft um, and ditch the entire thing because it's unrecoverable? Um, and if things are fine, then how do I get back on my right trajectory? So then it passes on its recommendation to the control system, and based on that recommendation, the control system applies the necessary torque and veers the vehicle right back on target. So this is kind of a new format. Um, I wanted to try it out. I thought it would be kind of an interesting subject matter and a lot of people like to kind of know more about things and um, it's kind of a, a black hole for a lot of people of how these machines actually work uh, from a really core level. So I'm trying to kind of break that down and um, I was considering doing maybe kind of a small series of different things like this where I cover topics uh, about different rocket subsystems. So if you want to see more of that, be sure to let me know, you know, comment. And I have a few other ideas for topics, so I would definitely make those if there's uh, an interest in it and cover that material as well. On the flight side, I actually flew a vehicle during the whole making of this video. 
but it didn't go too well. But here's kind of a sneak preview. And I'll see y'all in the next video.